Design Extender offers you tools to build Google Maps on your website. Today I'm going to show you how to build a static map and a dynamic database driven map and I'm going to point out the features that are new in Design Extender that were not in Pro Maps for Google. To get started make sure you've installed Design Extender and make sure you have a Dreamweaver site defined. So let's go ahead and start with adding a static map to our website. You may want to do this when the addresses aren't changing frequently, like to tell somebody where your office is located on your about or contact page. I'm actually going to do it on my home page in this sidebar here. So I place my cursor. I click Web Assist, insert Google Map. In Design Extender, we use version 3 of the Google Maps API, which means you no longer need an API key. There are some details on the first page of this wizard, um, which will walk you through Google's terms. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. On the second step of this wizard, you're going to go ahead and add your address. I'm going to click the Add button. And then you can see now I'm able to type in an address. You can also type in coordinates if you'd like, latitude and longitude coordinates. This helps a lot of folks internationally who Google Maps is not picking up their address for whatever reason. Um, so this does allow us to map anything across the world. I'm going to go ahead and just work with the address option. and click Next. And you can see my address was mapped. Now I can choose to change this marker if I'd like. I can make it a house or a pen. So you have some choices there. And then there's also some color schemes that you can access for the maps. And you can choose how you want your info window. If you choose custom, you see it gives you some HTML that you can customize here. I'll just go with the default and I'm going to click Next. Here I can choose the size of my map. I'm going to make it a little smaller since it's over in a sidebar here. One of the other features that is new is the default display options. So you can choose by default how you want the map to display. You can do satellite, or hybrid or terrain in addition to roadmap. I'll go back to roadmap. And then one of the other new features is you can choose the default zoom. You may want it to look like the regular default or maybe you want to zoom right in there and that's how you want to show your location is very zoomed in or very zoomed out. So you have some options there. I'll go back to this one. And then back up to the controls, you can choose what you want the, the bar to look like over here. This is the regular horizontal bar. You can also see if I go to drop down menu, you can see this area change here. And then you can offer some zoom controls for your users right here on your map. And you have some additional options to choose from. You can add traffic all kinds of things. So it has a lot of customization now. I'll go ahead and click Next. So then on the fifth step of the wizard, you can choose whether or not you want to include driving directions. If you check this box, you can see that you can then fill in the rest of the fields. Since I'm doing this in a sidebar, I'm going to not include directions. I'll go ahead and click Finish. So you can see a placeholder is put on my page um, with the right dimensions. And then if I go ahead and preview it in a browser, you can see the map is now located in my sidebar here, but I can uh, take a look at it and say, oh, the info window doesn't really fit. That's a little more zoomed in than I'd like it. Let's go back to Dreamweaver and make some tweaks. So back in Dreamweaver, I click on the placeholder and then I can click on the edit button in the property inspector. This will reopen the wizard. I can click next on the steps I don't need to change. 
And once I get to the screen that has um, more of my customization options, I'm going to go ahead and do something that I think is going to fit the map a little bit better. I'm going to widen it and lengthen it a little bit. And I think I'll change the zoom back to the default. And let's go ahead and see how that looks. I'll save my page and I'll preview it in the browser again. And now look, my map looks nice and neat. The info window fits, it's a good view. And if my users want to zoom in, they can absolutely do that. They can pan around, they can change to a different view like satellite, take on and off the labels, all kinds of things. Now I have a very interactive map on my site with a static address. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is create a dynamic map on your website. You may want to use a database to manage addresses if you frequently change those addresses or you want to show a lot of locations. Um, for this demo we're using a real estate website um, and I want to show my listings and uh, instead of coming into Dreamweaver and updating all of the addresses I want to show on the map every time an address changes or I have a new listing, um, I would manage those in a database and then I would set up the map to dynamically display those for my website visitors. So one of the things you'll want to do if you need to set up a, a dynamic map is make sure you are working with a PHP site. Over in the databases floater in Dreamweaver, um, you can set this up under choose a document type you'll want to choose PHP. I already have a testing server set up. The next thing I'm going to do is create a connection to my database. I'll click the Add button. I'm going to add a MySQL connection. I'll call it Maps. MySQL server is localhost for this demo. You may want to use uh, your remote server here. And here you'll want to choose um, the, the database that you're holding your addresses in. And you can see here now in my database is a uh, floater that it picked up my database. You can see uh, I have a table in there called locations. This is where my addresses are. The next thing I need to do is put a record set on my page to pull the addresses for my map. So I'm going to click Insert, Data Objects, Record Set. I'll go ahead and name it Addresses. You can see it picks up the connection to my database because I've already specified that. Locations is the table that I keep my addresses in. I'm going to go ahead and pull all of the columns in my database. I want to show all of the addresses. You may need to filter it. Um, you may have a column in your database, whether these are active listings or however you specify whether you want to show these locations. You may need to filter it down here. So I'll go, go ahead and click OK. And it tells me that a record set has been added to the page. Now I can go ahead and start the wizard. Web Assist insert Google Map. I skip the API key. And here I can click Add. You can see that the lightning bolt little buttons um, become activated. I can select those. And now you can see my record set from which I can choose um, what I want to display here. So for the street address, I'm going to pick this field from my database. For the city, I'm going to match each of these up. You'll have to pick the ones that match up with um, the right uh, columns in your database. And I want to select that I want to show multiple. So basically it's going to loop through the record set. I'll go ahead and click Next. And I'm fine with the default settings here. I'll click Next. And here I want a really large map for this page. I'm fine with all the default settings. I'll go ahead and click Next and Finish.
you can see a placeholder has been put on my page. I'll go ahead and save my page and preview it in a browser. And you can see here that I have a map of the dimensions I specified, mapping my four locations that were in my database. I can go ahead and click on a pen to get more information. And I can switch to satellite view if I want. Now I could specify in the wizard that I wanted zoom controls um, and then my user would be able to zoom around on the map here too. But I think you get the main idea. I hope that you are now able to add a static map or a dynamic map to your website. As always, visit us at www.webassist.com for more information or for technical support. Thank you.